and they, you know, as any kid, they change weekly. The one thing I held on to was race car driver. I remember in middle school, I was like, you know, a lot of people dream to be something and then they forget about it and they become accountants. I'm gonna stick with it. I, I pick race car driver. In other cities, you're a passenger. You can just cruise along and, and do your thing and the city runs without you, it doesn't matter. But here in Detroit, you have a chance to make a real difference. Like, you can create a transit system or you can create a new way to educate kids. It's unlike anywhere else in the world. Nowhere else do we have buildings and resources and people this smart and stuff this big uh, that's just waiting to be activated. For a long time, we've expected this train, this M1 light rail, to connect downtown and the rest of the city. It was going to provide a lot of change, a lot of transit-oriented development down the Woodward Corridor. And uh, I had been following this thing very closely. I'd just been very engaged because I thought it was going to bring about, finally, the new era of Detroit. And then one day I saw the headline. It said, light rail is dead. I was furious. And, you know, frustration can power her so much because I said, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna send buses up this corridor and I'm gonna make the service the best I can. And that was the building block behind the bus company. That was the basis that we built this thing on. There is a very rudimentary bus system here in Detroit and uh, a feature just got published last week that their budget is being cut by another $7 million. And so pretty soon there might not be a working bus system here in Detroit. There's 700,000 residents here who truly need and deserve transit and simply don't have it. There are people that lose entire livelihoods because they can't get to work in the morning. And it's ridiculous that we don't have a system that works for that. When I launched the DBC, it was supposed to be a small project. It was supposed to be this quick little thing that we showed that Detroit deserved transit, that it was something that the city could support and would help. Since then, DBC has grown into this big thing where we're solving all sorts of different transit issues using all sorts of different methodologies. Hey, what's up? When we introduced our bus trackers, six months later, DDOT got bus trackers. They paid a company to install trackers in their buses that people could actually see where the buses are at. And I can't help but think that we, we push them out of the nest a little bit on that one. When you're making a $120 million bus system innovate, when you're pushing them to improve service a little bit, I can't feel that's a big win. I couldn't do what I did anywhere else in the world, honestly. I couldn't start a bus company in San Francisco. I couldn't start one in Europe. I mean, there's no reason for this bus company to exist anywhere else but Detroit. If I had tried this even in moderately expensive states, uh, <laughs> I would have been priced clean out of the market. The DBC isn't going to fix all transit here in Detroit. We'll never get big enough, nor do we ever plan to get big enough to take that on. There's no, there's no point in that. Busing is a public issue. It should be solved publicly. But we can innovate and build technologies and work towards solutions that make transit more affordable and serve more people. We will keep working in Detroit to fill the niches that are going unfulfilled, the people that are going unnoticed, and do our absolute best to get people moved in, in the city, to, to put the city back on wheels.